Hi, uh, my name is Mike Oath, and I'm the founder and CEO of OnSip. We're a hosted voice uh, provider, voice over the internet provider. Uh, my Twitter handle there up on the corner is at VoIP CEO. Very good. I'm, uh, I'm Patty D'Alessio. Uh, my company is reInvent Interactive. I do uh, SEO, search engine optimization, and I do um, SEM or pay-per-click advertising on AdWords, which is what we're talking about today, as well as um, conversion optimization um, and technical SEO, inbound marketing kind of stuff. I'm a boutique agency, and um, I'm SEO Patty, which is easy to remember. Easy. So why don't we start with Patty, just explain for those that are new to SEO, the difference between paid and organic. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I think most people get this idea now, but, um, and, and then we'll talk about what, how this applies to what we're talking about today. But basically, in a Google SERP or search engine results page, there's uh, two types of links on the page. There's the paid, which is at the top, and it usually says that it's an advertisement, and then there's the organic um, or kind of natural um, search result, which is underneath it. Um, all of this is done by Google by the use of algorithms. So the top piece, which is the, the paid or the, you know, the AdWords, the pay-per-click, is done through a kind of blind bidding system. So you're bidding on particular keywords or phrases along with an open market. And um, based on price and quality score and a bunch of other um, considerations, Google will place those ads at the top, and this is stuff that you can kind of pay for. And then unrelated, or Google tells us it's unrelated, is the um, is the organic listing, which is underneath, which um, is sort of the basis for uh, my work as a search engine optimization, which is to optimize your site and your content such that um, you rank and show among, you know, with your competitors for that organic piece, which is below. There's usually about 10 results per page. Um, at the top, there's between three and four ads, typically. Um, and then you're going to have another uh, two to three at the bottom. Google has recently just gotten rid of what they call the right rail or the right-hand side paid search oh, really? ads. They're absolutely no longer there. They're, that just happened, I want to say, I don't know, last month? Yeah. It was last month. So, um, yeah, so so things are changing, but that's basically the shape of the of the page. You now have the top and the bottom, not the side for paid, and then the organic is in the middle. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. So the idea for this blab came up because Mike, who is one of my consulting clients, mm -hmm. used to be anyway, yeah. <laughs> blew me off this year. Um, he would wanted to start doing blabs, but I know you've been doing them on your own anyway, right? Right. Why well, I begged you to be able to come onto your blab. Yes. So you're on my blab. Here you are. It's big <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Network Now, Inner Circle, and virtual members, once a month, they get featured as the star of the show. So Patty's the star of the show, and you're her co star. Okay. Also, once a month, I also do VIP blabs. So this month, we're going to be talking with Natalie McNeil on the 18th. She's actually down with Richard Branson right now on his island. Can you stand it? Wow. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, talk about an amazing. <laughs> anyway, I digress. So so Mike uh, has a little experience using keyword generator, buying key, bidding on and buying keywords for his company to help mm -hmm. figure out what kind of content to write about, to drive right. traffic to your site and get more VoIP phone system. <laughs> Clients. So <laughs> there you yeah. go. let's uh, dive into that. Okay. okay. Great. Great. So, uh, the uh, the idea and and what I uh, first talked to uh, Jamie about was uh, how we decide what we're going to write about, what we're going to blog about, uh, and what keywords we're going to to purchase and and what uh content we're going to go after things like that and uh, th there's a couple different methods that we use and some are better at, at different stages of of different companies uh right now our marketing budget is higher than our revenue was five years ago so you know these some of these um things that we're, we're doing today might be applicable 
to you today, or they might not be applicable to to somebody for you know another four or five years. Um, but we use a combination of of a couple of different things, and uh, hopefully, uh, some of this is is informational, educational to uh, to some of the listeners. Um, the uh, uh, the other thing is that this is just you know this is what we've kind of come up with. We are not, we are not uh, we're we're not Patty. We are not search engine optimization people. These are different things that we've tried between Google Analytics and and, and everything else uh, that uh, have have worked for us over the years. So I'm I'm dying to hear what uh, Patty thinks of of what we've done and and how we might be able to improve what we're doing. I'm sure she'll tell uh, you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, overall, in your, and uh, hopefully Pat will back me up on this, you see lots of emails about, you know, d- click here and get your company on the first page of organic search results in a week. And it, it just it, it just doesn't happen like that. It's, it's a lot of hard work. Uh, it's uh, a- and so hopefully what we what we figure out here is that if you're going to spend all this time and energy and, and hard work doing something, do it do it the smart way. Um, so it's one thing just to, to blog every day. It's another thing to to blog in in a targeted fashion, mm-hmm. so that your content has the the keywords that that you're going for. Things right. Like that. You want to keep the robots happy and yeah. potential client humans happy. Yeah. Where'd you hear yeah. that, Jamie? <laughs> 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 Oh, that's funny. So, so Patty, what does that mean, Patty? As we as we get into this, um, it's a it's a quote that I always say, which is, uh, you know, uh, build it for the humans, but take into account the robots. Which is just, you know, making sure that your site can be crawled and that your information can be indexed by the major search engines. But as we go, John, I, I just want to um, uh, uh, interject this. Sorry, uh, Michael and Jamie is only no. because for my own um, education here, I have. I've already started doing some samples in front of me just for fun. So as we go through mm-hmm. and we're looking for content examples, what do you guys think of using cat toys as like an example if we're running through some examples here? I could actually bring a live cat on the screen if you'd like. And we could bring a cat. So um, so, so uh, Michael's going to go into how he's been using AdWords to sort of vet and validate and find ideas and, you know, sort of search around the for some keyword tools and see what people are actually searching online and then kind of what he does from that. And then I have a bunch of other tools too that we can talk about at the end, if that makes sense. And then we can talk about some examples and come up with some ideas. So awesome. great. Awesome. Cool. Go for great. So uh, the, uh, the, the first concept I want to talk about is, is a concept called the long tail. Uh, it's a great business book out oh, five or 10 years ago at this point. And it, it talked about Netflix, Amazon, where uh, it kind of in, in a retail space, the, the constraint was always shelf space. But in a virtual store, uh, in a virtual video store like Netflix or, or a virtual uh, retail store like Amazon, uh, that's not a constraint anymore. And so you would, if you if you looked at the Netflix rentals, you would see sure a, a huge uh, number of rentals of the latest Marvel movie and and Star Wars and and all that. But there's this really long tail that just goes out for infinity, and there's there's really no title on Netflix that doesn't get rented. There's literally nothing that just sits there and no one ever watches it. No one ever, uh, no one ever takes a look, no one ever searches for. So it's, it's, and that's actually kind of, kind of amazing. Um, and, and really the same thing for Amazon. There, there are very few, if any products that, that literally sit there forever and no one ever searches for and over no one ever purchases. And that concept is called the long tail. So it's a, it's a, it's a chart that, that comes up and shows the popular items. And then as things dwindle, they, they as methodically approach zero, they never quite get there. <laughs> uh, so the, um, the, we, the, and the, the book talks about a, a, a couple of different things about the long tail, but we use that for, for keywords. So clearly there are keywords that are in the fat part of that curve for, for our industry. VoIP and, and hosted VoIP and PBX and phone service and, and all of that. And, and all those keywords are, are expensive and they're in the fat part of the curve. Now, as you start to, 
uh, as that curve starts to bottom out and you get further away in that long tail, you start to get some some interesting things. And and you can find these in a in one of a couple ways. Um, one, you can you can look to see people who are finally at some point getting to your page. What what kind of weird keywords are are they looking for? Or you know, putting the the big thing is kind of putting yourself in the in the mindset of a customer and and going and looking at uh, looking at some of these keywords. Some of the interesting ones are error codes for hardware that your customers might be using. Okay. So for us, um, uh, VoIP phones. Um, Polycom makes a, a line of phones. Panasonic, uh, Grandstream, others, and uh, you take some of the more common error codes that people will be looking at because they're having problems with their phone, and you start to look at look at the uh, keywords associated around those, and those are those are available for for pennies for literally pennies they're way at the end of that spectrum no one's competing for them as patty said it's a you know it's a it's a bidding system no one's really competing for them google's happy to happy to sell them and it's not like you're going to get thousands and thousands of clicks a month but you might get a couple hundred and when those people are looking at that they you know they have a polycom phone they're having some sort of problem with it um send them to a landing page that's specific to that now I'll, I'll have patty talk about landing pages and a b testing and, and all that fun stuff um but uh, uh we would then take a, a couple of those keywords and and buy them again for for pennies at the long end of that tail, and then see what those hits are. Then, hey, look, this this keyword got us uh, to, uh, you know 100 results last month. Let's go and write a, a, a so purchasing that keyword got us 100 results. Let's go and write a blog post about that, and uh, tweet about it, and and try to get Polycom to comment on it and different things. And oh, look, all of a sudden now we're the number one organic result for this one tiny little weird error code, but anybody searching on that, we're gonna be at the very top of that organic list as we went and and did all the legwork to to make that happen. That's awesome. So you'd be, if you keep, if you buy it and you also write the blog post, you'd be in your, would you be in the organic and the paid results? You would be, you would be. That's awesome. Yep, but the, then the idea is like, okay, great success, we got that. Let's let's take that tiny little budget, throw that away, and, and go and and look at another set mm -hmm. of of keywords. So we're now in the top organic. That's good enough for us. Let's go find something else. Okay, Patty, comments? Yeah, I'm I'm just curious. How did you use Google the Google keyword the, the AdWords keyword tool to find like like what where, where did the idea spark? Michael, as far as the um, the error code being an opportunity oh. to create a blog post, it probably wasn't in AdWords, though, was it? No. So that started in, in with our support yeah. team. So okay. asking, uh, you know, asking support team, what are, uh, you know, and, and that's just just one thing. Um, Smart. So you might come up with some other things, but uh, yes, error codes for hardware. And so one of the things that we do is we do a phone review. Uh, so as a new VoIP phone comes out, we do a uh, we, we, for the most part, we buy them. Sometimes we'll, we'll get a manufacturer to give us the phone review. Um, but we'll do a full phone review and just more like a consumer reports type of thing. We don't sell the hardware, so we're an unbiased, uh, you know, third party, but it's fantastic SEO. Uh, all of those models for a lot of polycom phones, just searching for not even the error codes, just the, the main, uh, you know, Polycom SoundPoint IP 335. A lot of times, our phone reviews, because we get so many links and comments and tweets about them, those have higher organic results than Polycom's own website. It's wow. it's kind of amazing. Um, and so that I'd say that's closer to the the meat of that curve. It's it's really the the long tail when you're looking at error codes and and kind of things like that. But yeah, you never know where those ideas are going to spark. You're right. Um, but you, you have to be open to to getting those ideas from kind of all over the place. Things that customers might comment on, what what support might say, things like that. There's some comments. It says, the guy on the top right, that's you, Mike, <laughs> uh -oh. is the long tail king. <laughs> <laughs> they made my new um, Twitter handle. Long tail king. Love it. Yeah, if I were you, I'd kick that guy out. Uh, <laughs> I love humor. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's good. So, Patty, do you do anything long tail? This, you know, that term. Have you read that book? Oh, oh no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and and um, what's what's I think important to note is is people think of key. You know, what's the keyword? What are my keywords? That kind of thing. It's it's no longer a word or two words. We're talking. We're talking. You think about how you Google, right? We're typing full sentences and <laughs> full questions into Google anymore. So it's um, it's uh, you know, it, it's a brave new world. And what, what's interesting is right before this, I was on a I was on a blab where we were talking about um, rank brain, which without getting you know overly too technical, this is what Google is telling us that they're using in their artificial intelligence for natural language. Um, Kind of understanding and machine learning so you know they're learning google's algorithm is learning kind of colloquialisms and you know multiple different terms for the same you know the same word and and you know it's kind of breaking down all that and it's and it's teaching itself and it's building its its index and its understanding on its own now you know and this has been going on for, for quite a while but it's uh it's some some interesting you know kind of technology for sure um yeah but, but I mean, that's it. You know, you think, you know, some of the, the advice that I give to content developers is to, and you've heard me talk about this, Jamie, is to, is to answer questions. So what are the questions that, that people have about your services, your products, or what you offer, or what you are an expert in? Um, and make those, those questions actual blog titles and content articles, you know? So again, reviews. People are putting in a product and then typing the word review. So they want to know, what other people think about those products, um, you know, or, you know, whatever the question is, whatever the question is that you answer all the time, every time you, you, you right. sure everybody's got the 10 questions that their clients first ask them when they are engaging and that's the stuff to answer and that's the stuff to kind of put out yeah. there to get that organic placement. Yeah. And the, the important thing is to think about your buyer personas. So the different personas may have radically different questions. Uh, like we, uh, three of our main personas. One is is business owner Brooke. So a business owner is going to be looking for for value and reliability. Um, there is uh, admin assistant Amy, and she's going to see she's going to look at over a hundred web pages on on our site. So she's going to have keywords literally all over the place. But she's going to want to make sure that things are easy. Uh, easy setup, easy, easy maintenance. And then there's uh, network admin Nelson. He's going to be more concerned about the technical side of things. Um, how, uh, what's the redundancy? What's the security? Those types of things. So, uh, you know, uh, thinking of your, thinking of your personas helps you to come up with those questions mm -hmm. and what's, what's this type of person? What are, what keywords are they going to put in this type of buyer? What, what keywords are they going to put in? And they can be radically, radically different because they'll, they'll come at the problem from different points of view. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know. Does, does everyone do a lot of persona? We've, we, oh, we spent about a year doing persona modifications and, you can get really, really, really granular. We've tried to, like, we have admin assistant Amy, and we have unwilling admin assistant Amy. So oh, admin yeah. assistant Amy, who, who somebody, the owner said, you know, go find us a new phone system, and uh, you know, she does and does all the research, does a great job. And then there's unwilling admin assistant Amy, who got it dumped on her desk. Yeah. Like, oh God, uh, okay, okay, and it's just kind of going through the motions but they're they are different enough personas that uh, the way that you email them and contact them and so forth has to be you have to take that into uh, consideration it's just right. funny but you can get you can you can get a little bit too granular with stuff like that but sure. yeah. yeah understand your client for sure yeah that's that's actually really interesting in fact i just saw an article last week i put it on um on on twitter that was it was new to me but it was negative personas like who aren't you <laughs> oh, I was like, oh, I haven't gosh. seen that before. That's an even huh. bigger place to spend your days. <laughs> you are not. Who you don't want to attract? I'm sorry, say it again. Interesting. Who you don't want to attract? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I put, this guy, Tess Techler. <laughs> <laughs> Tess Techler? Yeah. Our troll? <laughs> yeah. Hi there, troll. I'm, I'm going to look. I'll look up the article. I'll post it in the. In That's the, right. In the but okay. I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. Even more information. So. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, you're you're right. I, I, the the Bing I was on uh, the the Blab I was on two weeks ago. One of the things we were talking about was was agents and getting agents to sell your to sell your service. And one of the important things is who are who's not your customer when you know when to say no. And if you if you don't know who's not your customer and when to say no, you waste a lot of people's time. Yeah, uh, yours, your agents, and so forth. Um, I know who my my. The people that aren't my customers, they're a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, Evan, let's see. Oh, no, maybe it's Evan. Anyway, he says, are there any alternatives to Google Keyword Tool? What do you got, girl? Sure. But by, by market share, it's it's not worth a lot of people's time, but, but there are. Okay. Patty, you want to talk some cat toys, girl? Yeah, so I was just trying to understand the question. Yeah, so he's saying, you know, if we're talking about Google, should we also be talking about Bing? Um, Bing, Yahoo. Yeah, so Bing owns Yahoo, and in the, the, the Bing tool, Bing has about, what, 25% of, of the market. It, it, kind of, it kind of fluctuates. Um, so, yeah, I mean, looking on both, Google is, is, you know, definitely has the lion's share, so we sort of start there. But, you know... Um, yeah, so we talked about looking at the data that comes out of the AdWords keyword tool, right? And Mike, I don't know if you want to kind of expand on this, but um, there's some interesting information that, that you can get from that. First, you can narrow down um, by location, whether you're looking at global ideas and content or just, you know, sort of U.S. Um, and what it's telling you is how many monthly searches are being done on that particular key phrase, and then it recommends phrases similar to that, right? So there's kind of that, that machine learning or that, that algorithmic um, kind of advice there. And it tells you how many people are, um, are sort of putting, actually putting that into Google, right? That's good information to have. And then not only that, but it tells you what's um, low, medium, and high as far as uh, competition, who's bidding on those key phrases. So a really sweet spot would be phrases that are searched searched often that have right. low competition, right? And and what the tool is designed to do is to, you know, you can then put that into a campaign and bid on those terms and, and um, you know, create, you know, campaigns and ads for that. But what you can then just kind of extrapolate from that is, oh my gosh, here's this real sweet spot. No one's competing on it. It's got a lot of, you know, volume. Let me try to jump into that space, right? And then look for alternatives. And, and then you're looking for that aha moment. Oh my gosh, I can certainly write about that. Um, I didn't know that people were looking for this type of idea or topic. So, I mean, that's yeah. that's the, the beauty of that particular tool. And of course, you know, there's always um, some critics that are talking about kind of what that is and that those numbers are a bit skewed and, you know, whatever. It It's information, you know, Google's, yeah. You know, they don't give you all the information you want, <laughs> but when they are giving it to you, you you sort of listen. So I think um, that, and then just sticking with Google, another way to also glean insights is to, you know, type in some of these, these concepts. Of course, it's not going to provide so well in the long tail, but type it in and see what sort of the auto fill is mm -hmm. on the page, you know, mm -hmm. kind of. What are, and then you can really find some interesting insights there. What that's telling you is that a lot of other people who've started typing these words are actually typing in this. And, and sometimes that can be really comical and whatever. But, um, you know, if you're looking for ideas, and there's some cat toy ideas that we can talk about. But, um, but yeah, any other tips, Michael? Yeah, two, two things for that. One is when you're doing, if you're doing test searches, do it from an incognito browser. So not a browser that you're assigned into because Google learns not, a, not only about the web in general, but about you specifically. So, so if you like ambiguous results, if you put in windows, Google pretty much knows that I'm an IT guy and is going to tell me about Microsoft Windows, not Windows for my house, mm -hmm. things like that. So it, when you go to an incognito window, then it's it's going to give you just what it would have as, as just general results, not the specific results just for you. And as far as um, uh, ambiguity goes, too, some of the search terms uh, like Windows – uh, you know, make sure that this this term is kind of specific for you and your 
your industry. You, you don't want to be paying for a keyword for Microsoft Windows when you're actually a, a Windows installer. You know, ah, like that. So, good point. <laughs> and the way that you do that is using negative keywords, right? So exactly. You're, you're going after Windows, but then the negative words, meaning anytime anyone types a long tail, including these words, don't show my ads or don't, you know, whatever. So those yep. negative words, and you can do this even in the keyword research tool, right? Don't right. computer, right. IT, whatever Windows operating system we're up to. I'm a Mac girl, so I don't even know. 10, whatever, uh, you know. Uh, so you can, you can really construct a really interesting keyword research out of this. And, um, and by the way, you can do all this research for free in, in AdWords, right? So mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you've got a, um, a Google account, which almost everyone does now, <laughs> if you've got yeah. a Gmail account or anything else, um, YouTube, um, you can just kind of go into into AdWords and simple to just kind of set it up lightly and then you've got the keyword tool to use. Yeah. Uh, Google Analytics. Yes. Want to talk about Google Analytics a little bit? Um, yeah. One, in, in context of content research, what um, if you have Google Analytics tracking code on your website, which absolutely everybody should, and I know all of Jamie's crowd does because I've been forcing it down their throats for years. But um, if you have that, you can do somewhat kind of research on your own site. You can see what content on your site, what um, if it's blog articles, if you've got a, a kind of a healthy blog that goes back in time, you can see what's being searched for, what's being clicked on, what's coming from organic search, right? You can then refresh those. There's things that you can do to that blog post that you know is getting good organic traffic, right? Because you can just go to the content section and sort by um, visits and see right. And then you can sort by kind of where they're coming from, right? And mm -hmm. then you can do stuff to that article once you know that it's getting a lot of a lot of attention, right? You can um, refresh it. If, if the ideas are sort of, I don't know, maybe there's new concepts now, it's a little bit old, you, you can add to that. Um, maybe a review, Michael, you can add more products to that review perhaps. Um, yep. And you can add you know, if I knew that my top rated content was something, an evergreen idea that I had from, you know, quite a while ago, what I could do is maybe add more opt-in or conversion focused content on that page. So I can either capture email addresses or, you know, point them to something mm -hmm. that I want them to kind of do. You know, you can kind of change the desired task of the page once you are kind of aware of this. But, um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's a, you know, and you can, you can learn a lot of, how to use and navigate around analytics through YouTube videos and some other kind of online training. But, um, yeah. but yeah, it's, it, it looks more complicated than it is, but I'm a bit of a data nerd and kind of like that kind of stuff. But, um, but yeah, no, yeah. so analytics for sure. Yeah, and you can and you can go as deep as you want. Uh, there's, there, there's data that you can always go deeper into, but uh, uh, you know, marketing today, like our um, VP of marketing, um, uh, Nicole Hayward, I heard agrees from Carnegie Mellon. You know, we're we're getting. Uh, you you need to have. You need to be that data nerd today. You know, to 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 be in marketing today for for websites. It's not just about that message and and crafting that message and making it look good. It's it's now uh, crafting that message, making it look good, and then following up with all the analytics and crunching all the numbers and doing your A-B testing on your landing pages mm -hmm. and see what's what's winning and keep doing more of that. Uh, uh, you know, um, uh, keep keep revising your, your pages and keep looking at your numbers. And, uh, you know, if you're if you're not exactly sure what you're looking at, if you don't keep diving into those numbers and like, oh, you know, these these numbers are fine, but uh, you know where the where the truth is, um, you know, it's the same people coming back. You're never you're never gaining a new audience or you know little things like that. So it's it's it it is important to you know it's it's not a set it and forget it type of thing. There's there's uh, there's a lot of work and it's and it's continuous work. Which is good for Patty because they can just hire her. <laughs> Patty, exactly. Is your website reinventinteractive.com? Is that correct? Yes. Yes, it is. And Mike, how do we find you? Onsip.com. Onsip.com. Yep. 
Okay. Don't be a wise guy. That's my job. <laughs> so we got some questions. Yes. What do you guys think about AdSense versus networks like Taboola and or Outbrain, which I've never heard of either. I'm just the host. So you guys need to answer that. Yes, yes. Patty, that's all you. That's all me. Okay, so AdSense, AdSense is, uh, it's, it's an interesting question. So AdSense is where um, you sort of take a piece of real estate on your page that you own, like say your blog or, or you know, your website, and you pretty much rent that out. So that's where Google is going to plop in ads and you're going you're gonna to have you know, advertising on your site. Um, and it makes it part of, of, Google's, um, you know, kind of Google's network of, of, of ads. So a lot of times they're the text ads or the visual ads. And so Google and Outbrain is where you can find um, places to sort of publish your, your blogs and your articles that, that sort of you're writing on. It's, it's a little different than, um, than guest posting, but you can actually pay to have your, your content kind of like amplified. So these are two kind of like paid options. I mean, I think AdSense, um, you know, okay. So publishing through AdSense, is that the question? Yeah. Um, oh. We uh, so when, yeah. when you're right so uh, when oh we, when I, I get it I'm sorry so so someone's paying me to publish their articles on my on my website yes okay yeah um I think that's that's interesting so it, you know I guess it depends what your business goals are and how that fits into it and um, you know where you derive your content from I think what we're talking about today is developing our own content versus um, buying and, and and using using that other content. Um, there's probably benefits to both. You'd have to weigh that. Uh, you know, I like, um, you know, there's the piece that you own. This is your, your website. You're going to, uh, grow it. You're going to invest in your kind of domain and you can, you know, you can kind of like use that when you get into using someone else's content, there's sort of like this duplicate content kind of issue and, um, you know, kind of what's yours, what someone else's. I think if you share a similar audience, it makes sense to share in that blogging. I hope that this is helpful. Stacks of trilly. <laughs> um, <laughs> but let, let me know if that answered it. I think that I think I think that there's pros and cons. Um, you know for sure. But I have heard a lot of people um, say a lot of great things about um, you know Outbrain and, and Tabula for sure. You know as far as um, gaining attention. Yeah. Well, that, that sparked something for me. So when you uh, when you go and you buy a, a keyword and, and buy ads on Google, it, it gives you two, at least when I was heavily involved in it, um, it would give you two options, Google, Google proper versus the Google content network. And so early on, we, we would buy ads on, we'd buy keywords and, and ads on, on both. And uh, we would get a lot of click throughs, but not a lot of paying customers on the, the Google content network. Uh, just Google proper and Google keywords was a, was a much, much better uh, avenue for us personally. Uh, but that's where Google manages, you know, banners and, and different things on, on all kinds of different websites and, and you get paid and you pay for, for click throughs from those other, other websites. We just didn't have as much luck, uh, as we did on Google proper. Yeah. It, it's actually called their display network. Now it used to be called their sort of content partnerships, but this right. is where you can imagine if you're on, you know, like a WebMD and you'll see little text ads and, and what um, it's called kind of like contextual advertising. So what Google mm -hmm. tries to do is look for those kind of commonalities and place your ads in context of those, that, that content type. So gotcha. you can manage that a little bit heavy. Uh, you know, you can actually see what websites Google was choosing to place your ads and you can kind of go in and turn a bunch of those off. Um, another suggestion is to create two different ad types, one for search only, one for the display network. It's 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 a lot of management of you know when you kind of like open that up. Those yeah. are more questions. Can you see the question, Patty? Yeah, do you guys ever worry about um, someone firing up extra or dropping too many paid copy links to your site? And yeah. I don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. There's there's ways to. You know, I, I think Google's cracking down on that, I would imagine. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Know. Yeah, it's been, you know, over the last 
you know, forever, it's it, forever that Google's been doing it. It's an arms race between people trying to get high on those those organic lists through cheating and it, you know, all, you know, crazy things, yeah, whatnot, and uh, you know, real, honest, you know, hardworking, real results. Uh, and then they they just keep getting better and better and better and better at it, and and shutting off more and more and more of the uh, of the you know the crappy stuff. Uh, the other thing that recently they turned on uh, mobility, so your website must be. Uh, mobile phone aware and mobile phone adaptive, or else they're they're they give you a huge penalty on the organic results, All right? As well, yeah, that's key. Yeah, it has to be mobile friendly. There's a way if, yeah. um, if you're not sure if your site is mobile friendly, you can search, you know, mobile friendly. Google allows you to just like put in your URL and then it tells you, you know, it does a scan, it tells you whether your site is mobile friendly. Yeah, that was right. last April's mobile get in. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Right. As far as bringing guests on camera, I only bring on media, VIPs, and um, top members. So John, I see John Ralston is on. If you want to come on camera, John, you just click the link to join the seat and we can get you on camera to ask a question in person if you'd like. Cool. So Patty, what's what are your examples you wanted to share? You said you wanted to share some different. Yeah, yeah. Back to back to the topic, which is you know how to find. Uh, you know, great topics to sort of create create content around, right? Um, right. These sort of you know, kind of like unicorn ideas. I was just in a talk. Um, there's there's one tip on on this goes a little bit to paid, but sort of like social media. And this was uh, Larry Kim, who I saw last week from Wordstream, um, and I've seen him give this talk a couple times. But he talks about finding these these unicorns. So uh, if you are in Facebook, you've got your business Facebook page, and Facebook really wants you to kind of pay for everything, right? Your your, your posts are not being seen unless you're kind of throwing dollars at it. Um, he says to kind of look look back in, in in the data, in the analytics that's in Facebook, look for those posts that naturally resonated organically. So, hmm. what what received a lot of engagements, what received a lot of you know likes, what received a lot of comments isolate those, bring those back and pay for that. So pay for that and, and you can you can you can pay for those posts for people that maybe don't already like your business or are aware of your business, knowing that it's gonna get kind of kind of a lot of engagement and may, you know, kind of like pick up traction. So um, I think that's an interesting idea. You can use social media to test these ideas, right? You can either ask for um, you know, if you've got a, a, a following, right? So you can ask um, you can take questionnaires. You can you can post and you know post a couple different ideas. To see what kind of traction if you can. Um, so that's a way to sort of use Facebook or Twitter to test out some ideas, right? Kind of see kind of see what's going on. Um, there's something called BuzzSumo. Are you familiar with BuzzSumo? Mm. Can I go no. to BuzzSumo.com. I'll put the I'll put the link here. Um, this is oh, this is my URL with the this is this is like to let this is where you can see what's already being shared and kind of popular online so if you're looking for kind of like a hot topic that's already um it shows you stats how many facebook shares linkedin shares twitter shares Pinterest shares google shares a particular topic has gotten so you can kind of put the topic up at the top hit search and then it tells you and then these are articles that other people are already kind of like passing around so if you're looking and the way this can help is you can look at this and say, oh, they're already sharing this, I'll share it, or they're sharing it and maybe there's an angle on that I can take. You can either take kind of a contrarian review, right, kind of take the, the opposite of what the article is saying and write about that, right? We all think right. that's true, let's kind of write about this. I mean, not to be negative, but if, right. if you have a different point of view, you can share that. Sure. Um, so, so anyway, that's really cool. They give you so much for free and then they kind of ask you to sort of be a paying subscriber, but um, but that's a, a, a free a free app, which I think is fun. Um, let me bring up another one. And I was doing cat toys because I thought it was I thought it was like kind of funny. Uh, wait, I'm looking for um, this one's really cool. Uh, oh gosh, wait. Um, Answerthepublic.com. Has anybody seen this one? No. Super cool. Super cool. So again, we're looking at ideas that we can kind of search for. So here's here's the link. 
So bring this up. There's this funky guy. Um, I think it defaults to UK. You want to kind of turn, you want to choose uh, US for our examples here. And I put in cat toys and it gives you not only a visual, it takes, it takes a minute, but it's, you know, it's crunching some cool numbers. Um, and what it does is it'll, it'll kind of attach like preposition. So I'm, I'm putting in cat toys and it's giving me with. Cat toys with ribbons, cat toys with honeysuckle, cat toys with shipping. And, and it's giving me these just like crazy things too. Cat toys to build, cat toys to make from fleece, right? Like cat toys, uh, cat toys like, like cat wow. toys like toys. You, you see what I'm saying? Are you, are you seeing the visual? That's image? cool. So this is like super, super awesome. Um, as you scroll down, it kind of breaks it down by like uh, alphabetical things. So I found as I was looking at each of these different tools, if I was a pet writer, and I know that we have a dog snack writer in the group, or you know, we, we use something in a gen folks April. But one of the things here that, that I wouldn't have thought is, is is how many different toys you can cat toys you can make out of paper towel rolls. I was like, I would blog about this. I didn't know it was a thing. It's a thing. So it, this is one of the things that, that kind of like jumped out at me. Um, Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to trying to look to see if there's any questions, Jamie. I'll, I'll let you uh, scan the questions here. Um, you, you, you've earned your cred. Your street cred has just been earned, apparently. Oh yeah. Have, like lots of techies on here. Oh, and, did I? Okay, okay, very cool. Yeah. So this one is 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 just outrageous. It's just outrageously fun. So so here's an idea. So you you brainstorm even just internally with the humans in your group. What are we going to write about? We're creating our maybe our blog calendar for the month or our content calendar for the month. What are some of the topics? Take those topics and then vet them against some of these tools. Vet them against Google Analytics. Type them into Google. See what other variants people are are searching on. Right. See if you can find or optimize what you were already thinking was a great idea, and just you know kind of vet it and go with it. Um, let me see what other one. Uh, I I'm gonna bring up my phone. There is a cool app that I totally love. I'm forgetting the name. I think it's Nuzzle. Um, Nuzzle, N-U-Z-Z-E-L. E-L, not L-E. Yep, uh, Nuzzle. So it's Nuzzle. Um, it's free. And what it tells me, <laughs> similar to like a BuzzSumo, but a little bit different, is I can sort this by the by a time frame. So it's the last 24 hours, you know, two hours, four hours, eight hours, last week. It kind of goes on. And it's sort of breaking down kind of like the news for me. And I connect this to both my Twitter account and my Facebook account. And it pulls for me, again, these most shared articles. So it's kind of, if news is breaking, I can see what's happening on Twitter in the last 24 hours. It kind of bubbles those up. Um, yeah. An interesting tactic that you can use to play this is to get a Twitter account that you just use for things like this. Only follow all the influencers within your niche or your you know, subject matter. Right. And then see where the trends are like immediately without even really having to like home through and kind of do it yourself. Um, oh. But but these tools are just are just really, really fun. So in the last 24 hours, can I go, let me see what the last two hours, the last two hours, and this is my my actual SEO, you know, SEO Patty account. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on with, I will skip that one. Um, five stages of customer advocacy is something that's jumping up. Um, seeking investments from Microsoft and Amazon. Um, there's an owner signal intent to compete aggressively with Google Maps. Okay, so there, there's a big Google Maps article that's kind of causing a stir within the folks that I follow within my networks. But this is fun. So what you can do with this is you could write about it. It can create awareness for yourself as content creators, and you can react to it. Um, you can then sort of like hijack the hashtag for it as well. That's always kind of fun, right? Hashtag hijacking, um, where you create something and then it's blowing up. So don't just write Kim K, Kim Kardashian or something like that, but actually be, you know, substantive with hot topics. Um, and then you can also, you know, you can gain awareness and make sure that you're not publishing something that doesn't make sense to the current hot topic that's going on. Right. So anyway, those are, those are some kind of fun things. Um, any other keyword research that, that you use, Michael, anything? Um, that's a good question. You can search the hashtags, right? right yeah. In, right, in, right, right, right in Twitter. Twitter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, we. Uh, it, what we do is so. Uh, just 
yeah. boring. <laughs> it's, just, it's phone service. It's been around yeah. since the late 1800s. Uh, yeah, you know, we we kind of stick with what what our customers are talking about, um, what what they're asking about, what um, uh, what what's popular in, in tech support at the moment, things like that. So we're we're rarely uh, you know hot, new, and happening. Right. Um, but but I've already sent these emails over to our marketing department. They're awesome. Or I sent an email with these two links. Those are great. Okay, great. I'm going to throw one more at you. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> this is Uber suggests it's a, kind of a similar to what we were already talking about, but you put in you put in your your kind of key phrase and it comes up with some some other ideas. This one will actually create a word cloud for you, um, and it will you know just kind of kind of ex expand on your your keywords and looking for looking for new stuff. Um, there's a question for you. How do you find clients? So do you want to tell them about your weekly blab you have on Wednesdays at noon Eastern? I do. I do. Which is why I should explain why I have a beer in front of me. I don't know if you noticed. I don't know you can't see it. Just, Show me your crazy, beer. I just assumed it was apple, apple juice. No, not apple juice. No. I, I do. A, I do. Um, it's, it's a marketing tactic that I, that I use with my partner, Dan, who's up in, um, up in Connecticut. He makes websites. I do search engine optimization and, and paid marketing. We do, a, uh, always have something to invite someone to. This is part of, um, Michael Port's book yourself solid, which is, which is where I learned this tactic, but I do a, uh, a SEO and IPA blab. It used to be a live hangouts on air up until about last August. I think I moved over to the blab platform. So I, start off we'd start off the the talk with what beer i'm drinking and talk a little bit about that and taste it live on air and then we talk about an article so we sort of just like promote that blab and that just sort of engenders that no like and trust and the ability for someone to sort of get to know you a little bit before they're sort of committing to your services um or, or kind of ideas right so when you meet someone it's not just the elevator speech with here's my business card it's Oh, you know, I do this thing every Wednesday at noon. You should check me out on Blab. I'm on Twitter at SEO Patty. You can find me that way. And then it's just kind of a soft introduction. Yeah. Okay. yeah beer drinking SEO girl meets Harvard guy. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely subscribing <laughs> to that. Uh, I'm a huge IPA fan, so I'm I'm there. It's excellent. So this is actually today's beer is from Evil Genius, which is a local brewery to us here in Pennsylvania. It's called Shut Up Meg, which is your family guy, right? Um, yep. And um, this is an, a farmhouse India pale ale, which is an interesting combination of two styles that I'm a big fan of. So it's the Saison or the farmhouse, mm -hmm. along with the IPA, which you know, I enjoy. So um, I usually don't drink the whole, I usually just kind of taste it on air and then put the cap back on and wait for happy hour. But um, <laughs> Yeah, just because you're not, but just because you're so smart and no SEO and all that computer techie stuff doesn't mean you're not cool. <laughs> I guess, I guess we'll see, we'll see. Um, yeah, but anyway, thank you for that, Jamie. Thank yeah, she, we're going to be doing a live SEO and IPA at a local bar in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, at the end of the spring. So that'll be fun. A little beer taking, okay. a little Google Analytics sounds. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I always love to to get the ladies around some beer, and they're like, "Oh, I didn't." They'll sit know. through the Google it's Analytics. If we don't get beer, they'll sit through the her Google Analytics. Talk. <laughs> 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 well, let awesome. me go through. Oh my gosh. Um, Any last words, you guys? I gotta jump off by two. Nope, nope. No, no. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. There's a question here that's about a typical monthly contract. I think that's directed to me for, is that, is that for SEO and paid search, I guess? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, contact me offline. We can certainly talk. I do, I do a couple different models. I can do, you know, consulting um, for my clients that I have retainer models with. I both um, babysit and monitor their SEO and their paid search, and it kind of depends. Um, oh, fantastic. Yeah, contact, contact me. Okay. Yeah. Contact me. Great. Thanks. Because it's kind of all over the gamut. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense. But yeah. Thank you. Nice to meet you. All right, Mike. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Have a great day at Onsip. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. All Thanks, right. Patty. Care, guys. Yep. Bye. Absolutely. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah.